about teaching this class is that it gives me a really good excuse to share lots of pictures of my own animals. Um, these are my three cats and my two dogs with uh, my niece, my nephew, and my daughters. Um, so just to give you a little idea of uh, what my life is all about, these are some of my favorite things on the planet right here. Um, tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've been using doTERRA oils exclusively for over seven years. Um, as soon as I realized the incredible results that I was getting for my family's health, um, I began to teach others about them almost immediately. So I really enjoy teaching classes and sharing with others everything that I've learned and learning more from them. Um, and these photos are the reason why I use the essential oils for my own health, my husband's health, my friends, but really these, these, uh, everything in this picture, they all count on me. And uh, I am so empowered knowing that I have doTERRA oils in my life to help support them. Um, I just want to share real quick that except for one trip to have an earache checked for my youngest daughter, just like a month ago, um, maybe it was two months ago, it was right before all this craziness started. Um, and other than that one trip, um, my family has just gone into the doctor for well visits and very carefully and thoughtfully timed vaccinations when necessary. Um, and the same for my pets. Uh, and that's not the way our life used to be. Um, we used to, uh, unfortunately, I every single winter would get bronchitis and go through rounds of antibiotics um, that had been for most every winter of my life. And my youngest daughter was born with a compromised immune system and um, she would periodically get uh, minor asthma attacks uh, caused by virus. And those would always lead to pneumonia. So every year she would end up at least once with pneumonia. And it was really terrifying for me and doTERRA changed everything because with the sample of Breathe and On Guard that my good friend Don Beam gave to me, um, my life has changed since then in so many ways. So I'm so grateful because um, now I feel that I can give the very best to all of these that I love so much. Let's see if I can, there we go. So here's something we're gonna talk about today. Um, I'm gonna be sharing about this in a few minutes, uh, how we can use the oils for dogs and cats. Um, and some of the things that we're gonna cover are diffusing with pets, safe oils uh, that you would dilute before using topically, uh, as well as oils to avoid. And very importantly, using the essential oils and the doTERRA products to reduce toxins in the home, because that's a very important part of our uh, pets health because they are exposed to um, the home environment just as we are, but they're much closer to it and um, much more sensitive with their paws and their nose um, right there next to the floor that we may have just cleaned. And we want to make sure whatever we use for it is going to be safe for them. Um, tell you a little bit more about my experience with animals. Um, I, I've cared for animals all my life, had pets my entire life, um, like many people, but um, I, when I started out, my very first job was walking dogs for 25 cents a day. Um, and then I had my, my first real job was at a pet store. And then later when I was in college, I worked for several years for a company called Pet Pros, where I was um, the assistant manager of the store, worked with uh, breeders of dogs and cats, and tried to help them to find the very best products for their specific breeds. And I learned such a great deal from the breeders. Um, I learned a lot about pet nutrition and about products and needs, but still there was a big chunk missing now that I have doTERRA. I really feel confident that uh, I love to help people to find the very best ways to support their pet's health. Let's see, and uh, ever since working um, with animals, I have, I've since worked with many veterinarians now that I'm using doTERRA oils. And um, those veterinarians have taught me a great deal as well. And we've researched together and found ways to help my animals as well as many other animals that are in their care. Let's see. First though, we're gonna talk, um, hopefully quickly, I'll be as quick as I can, three cool things about essential oils in general, because it's really important that you all understand that. Um, the first thing I'd like to share is that 
essential oils are 100% natural and safe. So there's nothing added or taken away. They're just simply uh, pure plants, um, no side effects, and luckily no addictions. Um, they're safe for babies and children, adults, and when properly and safely used for pets as well. Um, they have amazing health benefits. And a fun fact is that uh, pure oil is about 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. So a drop of peppermint oil, for example, is equivalent to drinking 28 cups of peppermint tea. And you can still get the therapeutic benefit of all that peppermint herb from one tiny little drop of pure and potent essential oil. And if you have some peppermint, which I'm really hoping you do, go ahead and get that out. Um, take a drop of it and put it in your palm and be really careful not to get it in your eye. Um, I've actually done this before and many people who are experienced with oils have. And luckily there is a quick fix. Any carrier oil like our wonderful fractionated coconut oil that doTERRA sells or any edible oil can be used, olive oil or even just cooking oil from your cabinet. If you don't have any oil on hand, milk will work because it has uh, fat content and the fat will bind to uh, those little molecules that are burning your eyes as your eyes create tears. The oil and water don't mix so it becomes quite uncomfortable quickly and you put that fractionated coconut oil on and it soothes immediately any discomfort. So keep that in mind. If you ever have oil on an area where it feels that uh, it doesn't feel right, you can go ahead and dilute from the top by adding the fractionated coconut oil. Now, don't be afraid to um, touch the peppermint oil in your hands with one finger. Um, I like to use one that I'm not likely to touch my eyes with, like my ring finger or my pinky, but touch that to the peppermint oil in your palm and then gently touch that to the roof of your mouth and you will very quickly realize how potent and amazingly fresh our peppermint uh, from Washington State, which is where I live, uh, is it just as that uh, touches your mouth, you'll feel how powerful and potent that is, just as if you had had 28 cups of peppermint tea all at once. <laughs> Let's see, so that is the first cool thing about essential oils. They're 100% natural and safe. So just to make sure you're listening and to get some comments going, um, if you could put into uh, the chat box if you're on Zoom or the comments if you're on Facebook Live and let me know what you heard to be the first cool things about essential oils. The second cool thing about essential oils is that they're effective. Um, they can often be very uh, much more effective than many modern approaches to health problems. They help our bodies focus on the root cause instead of just chasing after symptoms. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but um, let's start right now with some really basic biology. You can see the cell there um, and that oily cell membrane is that lighter blue around the outside. And the cell membrane protects the cell and keeps everything that the cell wants in, in, and everything that the cell wants out, out. Um, the two things that are harmful to our cells are bacteria and viruses. And bacteria usually forms on the outside of the cell um, and viruses duplicate the DNA on the inside of the cell. So all you have to remember is that bacteria stays on the outside and viruses uh, actually go through into the inside. And let's say you went to the doctor with a bacterial infection, uh, like my daughter used to get her pneumonia. And um, that would usually give you a recommendation for an antibiotic. And after taking that antibiotic for seven to 10 days, it probably will clear up the infection. But generally that comes with uh, wreaking havoc on your gut and uh, sometimes your hormone. And it can even um, suppress your immune system a little bit so that you're more likely to get sick uh, with another virus right away after. Um, so that's, that's how they treat bacterial problems. For viral problems, they usually tell you that there's not much that can be done. Uh, you need water, rest, and let the virus run its course. And this is because most modern recommendations, um, pharmaceuticals, are water-based synthetic agents. And frequently they come with side effects. And in some cases they can be very addictive. 
Um, water and oil don't mix, so to make this just super basic and easy, um, if the recommendation from your doctor is water-based, it has a really hard time penetrating that oily cell membrane and stopping the duplication of a virus. And the, sorry, I skipped, my notes are skipping. Okay, here we go, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the essential oils are different because they're oil-based. And this means that they can permeate that cell membrane and they can work on a cellular level without side effects or addictions and combat bacteria on the outside of the cell and prevent the duplication of viruses on the inside. So it's wonderful that it can work both outside and inside the cells in your body. This is why they're often far more effective. So that's the second cool thing about essential oils. Put your answer in the comments if you can tell me what the second thing about essential oils is. So On Guard blend that just popped up there on the right is um, just an incredible immune system supporting blend. Um, and I really love to use it to support my family. Uh, every day we use it in a roller on our feet, uh, just part of our morning routine. And then also I use it quite a bit for cleaning household surfaces. And we're gonna talk more about green cleaning very shortly. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about the third cool thing about essential oils, and that is that they are affordable, far more affordable than traditional medical, medical care. Because of course, you've got um, generally co-pays. Um, if you have a good insurance plan, most of them still have co-pays. You've got all the time and the gas uh, for going to your doctor, and often you have a prescription fee as well. But um, when you can use essential oils, you know, one drop of lemon, for example, um, the wholesale cost on that is about four cents, uh, three or four cents. And um, uh, lavender would be another example. It's about twice that, six, maybe eight cents. And so it's incredible how inexpensively we can support our bodies and not wait until it's bad enough to do something about it. When you see something or feel something coming on, you can immediately have in your hand what you need to help your body. And you can save hundreds of years, sorry, hundreds of dollars a year in medical costs. So that is the third thing about essential oils, um, that they are far less expensive and affordable. Um, I actually keep notes on my calendar whenever I am going to, or thinking that I might have to take someone into the doctor if something doesn't get better, um, or to the veterinarian. And I take a little corner of my calendar and I put notes every time I save maybe 20 or 50 or $100, I think, um, at the doctor or the vet. And then at the end of the year, I add it all up and we celebrate how much money we saved. And often we do something really special for our family with all the money we've saved. And after seven years, let me tell you, that is thousands and thousands of dollars. So that is the third thing that um, is about essential oils, that uh, they are affordable. And if you wanna pop that in the comments, it helps us to get um, more attention for our presentation uh, on Facebook's algorithms if you put more comments in. So we really appreciate it if you wanna go ahead and put um, all three things, if you can remember them in the comments. We appreciate that. And these are the answers, all three things. They're safe, they're effective, and they are affordable. So let's have a little experience with wild orange. Um, if you have some wild orange oil, great. If not, then reach out to whoever's teaching you about oils and ask them for a small sample so you can try it. So what you want to do is you want to put a tiny bit of wild orange in your hand. Um, you might have a little bit of that peppermint still on there too. They smell fantastic together, so that's not a problem. Put a drop of wild orange in your hands. Rub your hands uh, together really briskly. I like to keep my fingers out so that, again, you don't get that essential oil on the fingertips, which um, under normal circumstances can get in eyes, but we've been so good about not touching our faces, right guys? So uh, we don't have to worry about it so much right now. But anyway, normally when I rub my hands together to spread the essential oil and get those aromatic compounds going in the air, um, I go ahead and just keep my fingers kind of pulled back so that it doesn't spread all the way to my fingertips. That way I can keep it, um, keep the 
orange on my palms and um, smelling it rather than accidentally getting it somewhere where it doesn't belong. So uh, that smells incredible, doesn't it? And again, those of you who don't have some wild orange, please be sure to get some soon. Um, another oil there that is the Breathe Blend, which is great to help lungs and sinuses and promote clear breathing. Uh, that blend is actually the one that I mentioned before that really changed my life. When I tried that blend with my daughter and I saw how quickly she got the pink back in her cheeks and was able to breathe, um, you know, if she feels that she's a little short of breath um, because of her asthma, she gets a little breathe out and does a hand inhalation treatment, just like I explained with the wild orange, but with the breathe blend. And it's incredible for opening airways and making it so much easier to breathe, whether it's just you're feeling a little congested or you actually have a concern like my daughter does. So now that we know three cool things about essential oils, let's talk about the three ways to use them. Here we've got aromatic use in the diffuser, aromatic straight from the bottle, smelling it, um, or diffusing it from your hands, like we um, suggested. And really for emotional support, this is the number one way to use essential oils because by putting those aromatic compounds in your nose, they touch the olfactory nerve and that is connected directly to your amygdala, which is where your emotional and your memory center is in your brain. And so aromatic use is my favorite way to get emotional support from the oils. It also can help to cleanse the air and of course support the respiratory system. Another way to use essential oils is topically um, by putting it directly on an area that needs some support. Um, it's best to dilute with fractionated coconut oil. That gives you the best results because it actually works as a blanket. Those heavier coconut molecules, coconut oil molecules, kind of hold down the more volatile aromatic compounds in the essential oil. And so it actually works better if you use um, the coconut oil or another carrier oil. You can use other carriers, of course. Um, our personal favorite is the fractionated coconut oil because it's non-greasy, it doesn't clog pores, it's easier to wash out of your clothes or your sheets if you get any on there. So there are lots of reasons why, oh, and it's unscented too, which is wonderful because then you get to smell the, the great oils instead of olive oil or any of the others that have a, a mild fragrance. So it's really great that the fractionated coconut oil has all the coconut proteins removed, so there's no fragrance at all, and it's very, very light and non-greasy. Good stuff. All right, so here are two examples of oils that you could use topically. The deep blue oil is great for achy muscles. Uh, put it a little bit of it on the back of your neck if you have any head tension, that works great. And then of course the um, Digest Zen, is wonderful for any kinds of tummy troubles at all. Or even just after a meal, I like to rub a little bit clockwise on my stomach with a little bit of the fractionated coconut oil. And it's just amazing. You didn't even know that you had a little bit of stomach discomfort until you put it on and you get a little relief and it's like, oh, it's great. <laughs> Another way to use the um, essential oils, and this is really, you have to be very careful to only use doTERRA essential oils this way. Um, and if you look on, any bottle of doTERRA oils, you can very quickly see that there's a supplement facts box on all of the essential oils that are approved for internal use, safe for internal use, and there will not be a supplement facts box on the ones that are not. So um, we have two examples here, lemon and frankincense. If we were to rotate those bottles just a little bit, we would um, find that they have a supplement facts box. So they are safe for internal use, and you can put them directly in a glass of water, um, in a veggie cap or directly under your tongue. All right, so the three ways again, aromatic use, topical use, and internal use. And if you wanna share in the comments the three ways to use essential oils, we'd sure appreciate it. And another reminder, be sure um, if you're a live attendee or if you view this video before Saturday night when I'll be sending out um, a special handout, bonus handout for everybody who either listens live or listens to it in the next few days. Um, 
be sure to share in the comments where you're from and who invited you and we will be sure to send you some great handouts it's going to have tips from this presentation as well as some of my personal recipes and um, some little cheat sheets that are great for uh, quickly identifying oils that are safe to use on dogs and cats and there's one for cats and one for dogs so I will be sending those out on Saturday night so that they will be there um, Sunday morning. So be sure to watch before uh, Saturday late at night and I will be sending to everybody who has their name in the comments and where they're from. So thank you for participating in that. And um, now we get to talk about my favorite subject. I'm gonna put away these notes, move to my other notes. And too many notes. Too many notes. Okay. Awesome. So again, I told you I love to talk about uh, to teach this subject. I get to share pictures of some of my favorite things, and um, this is one of them here. This is my dog Hazel. Hazel is an eight-year-old Staffordshire Bull, Bull Terrier, so smallest of the pit bull breeds. Um, she's an amazing little dog, but um, I'm going to share with you the pictures of my animals so I can kind of give you some examples of how I use the oils every day and hopefully that will give you some ideas of how you can share the oils um, with your pets. Um, Hazel uses a spray of frankincense and lemongrass that's properly diluted for her little body size and I spray that on each of her back foot pads right between the toes uh, once a day and that helps her with her back ligaments. Um, she's got a little bulldog brain and a wonky little bulldog body. So the two of them don't always work together very well in that she just will run and run and run and chase and chase and play and play. And she doesn't necessarily know when to, when to quit. So that has led to some issues with her ligaments and to us knowing to not let her over exercise. But um, the spray that I made from the lemongrass and the frankincense has just done wonders. Um, as long as I use that regularly, she doesn't have any troubles. But if I, if I, when I have in the past stopped using it, I've noticed that she gets to limping a little bit and, and that when she does run, it really bothers her. So it's really just a, a preventative and a maintenance um, that I spray that in between her foot pads on her back legs every day. Um, also, I do use lavender or serenity blend quite a bit to help her with anxiety. She gets very nervous with thunder, lightning, fireworks, um, loud noises, and also she picks up on stress quite a bit. Um, I've noticed during this uh, quarantine that we're under right now that the family stress really is picked up by her, so I've been diluting I mean, excuse me, I've been diffusing some serenity and lavender for her and it helps her and um, one of my cats too, who also is a little on the anxious side. So this is Silas. Silas is four um, and you know, actually he just turned five and Silas um, has had liver issues since he was a baby. Um, it just is something that we discovered when he was young that his liver numbers weren't quite right in his blood work. And so I use fennel and copaiba in a spray. Um, I put one spray on his food every night, or um, I switch that out sometimes and I'll use the Zendocrine spray and just a spritz. And those are diluted before I put them on. And we're gonna talk about dilution in just a little bit, but um, I put that right on his food. And um, since I've been using that now for, gosh, almost three years, I think, um, his liver numbers are back into the normal range. And so we're really happy. The vet was really impressed that we didn't have to go for the very, very expensive medication that they suggested. We tried this route first and we got exactly the results we wanted. So again, there's a little nod to how affordable the essential oils are. The medication for his liver that um, they recommended was gonna be about 70 to $100 every month. And so if you, uh, add that times 12 every year, we're saving a lot of money. And it's really nice that he's so healthy. Uh, occasionally he'll get hot spots, And I found that Roman chamomile diluted properly for his weight is the very best remedy for him for that. So if anyone's having trouble with hot spots, Roman chamomile is incredible. This is Solcito. He is one of my three cats. He's our youngest. 
and he's a really healthy kitten, so he does not use very many essential oils. Um, the only essential oil that ever really is used for his benefit is calming oils in our diffuser uh, because he is on the anxious side. He's kind of a goofy boy. And this is Rufus. Um, Rufus doesn't use oils during the winter, but in the summer and the spring, I do use them for him for a, uh, he actually is my one cat that does go outside because he only goes in our yard. I could go on and on about why he goes outside because I don't believe that cats should generally go outside when you can help it, but he does actually go out just to our porch. And so um, if he gets a flea, he actually will start pulling his fur from the area of the flea bite and will make himself bald on his back from it. So um, luckily we found that um, a spray that I have made with a little bit of Arbor Vitae and cedarwood and lemongrass um, and our Terra Shield blend works wonderfully. I put that on my hands, rub them together, and then I massage it on his stomach and his feet before he goes outside um, when it's seasonal for fleas. And it's a wonderful repellent. And if he does get a bite, I use a little bit of lavender to soothe as soon as I notice him licking his fur excessively. And it just has changed everything for him. Every summer he used to be bald on his back from the fleas. And it was just a, a really really big problem for us. And now he's beautiful and happy. And then this is Lunita. And Lunita was my uh, first venture into really using the oils a lot on the cat. And um, so I did a great deal of research when we found her in Costa Rica. Um, my family and I spend a great deal of time down there and my girls were attending a school and in that playground of the school a litter of kittens was born and this particular one had a problem with her feet. You can see here that they were burned by, I'm not sure what, whether it was heat or chemical, um, but she definitely needed some help and she was so sweet and friendly that I gave in and we brought her to where we were staying and helped her feet. We helped her fleas. We helped with the ticks that she had. Um, a little geranium for the ticks. We talked about what I what I use for fleas. Um, and just, she's just was, we fell in love. We couldn't help but rescue her. And um, so we decided that she should come home and try being a suburban house cat. And you can bring the kitty out of the jungle, but you can't always bring the jungle out of the kitty because she growing up at a school with vegetarians uh, really loves greens and will pretty much climb you. You can see what she's done to this piece of romaine lettuce. She absolutely loves romaine and um, most other greens. She doesn't care for iceberg lettuce, but she uh, is a real character. But for the most part, she really has adapted well to living in the cold Pacific Northwest in our warm, cozy house. So she is a very happy girl now. doTERRA announced in 2018, um, that's when this picture was taken, so it says coming soon, uh, the formation of the Veterinary Advisory Board, but um, the great thing is, is that it's all up and running. They've got the Veterinary Advisory Board together with eight top vets from around the country. Uh, Dr. Janet Rourke is one of those vets, and she is a wonderful resource on Facebook, um, and then she also does podcasts for doTERRA, and um, she has some private Facebook groups and some public Facebook groups. So uh, she is a wonderful resource. Again, her name is Dr. Janet Rourke. Um, also, Dr. Mia Frezzo is on the Veterinary Advisory Board, and she has written a book. The book is called Spoil Your Pet. Um, that's spoil with a little SP and a big oil. Uh, spoil Your Pet, Practical Guide to Using Essential Oils. Again, her name is Dr. Frezzo, F-R-E-Z-Z-O. That's a great book. And, um, and she and the other vets on the panel are just great resources for doTERRA as we go forward, trying to share with people that these are wonderful resources for our four-legged friends as well. Um, not just dogs and cats, but also um, farm animals um, and you know, larger cows, horses. Um, I have used the oils on llamas and alpacas before. Um, so there are so many different options for helping to care for our pets. 
And I love this quote from Dr. McCaskill, one of our vets on the board. He said that using doTERRA products are definitely safer than chemical products. And he was referring to both pet products, uh, sprays and other things you might use for your pet, but also cleaning products. Because like I mentioned before, the pets are right there um, on the floor all the time where you've been cleaning. And so it's really important to use natural based cleaners and doTERRA has wonderful products. This is a picture of my lovely under sink. And I love that Luna can play in there because there's nothing in there that would hurt her. Um, everything in there is, is naturally based. Um, many of the products are in jars and jugs that uh, I've created from my oils. And um, in most cases, water, uh, vinegar, uh, sometimes a little bit of vodka or rubbing alcohol. But um, essential oils are a very important part of all of my cleaning uh, products. And if you're interested in learning more, um, there is a green cleaning with essential oils group that PJ Hanks runs that's wonderful. And of course, the EO Life Hub also shares great um, green cleaning recipes. And you can always ask the person who's sharing oils with you um, about any recipes that you might need to replace some of your um, more, more potentially toxic uh, cleaning and household products. All right, so this is a photo of poor Hazel. She does not like fireworks. And one wonderful thing about the lavender and how wonderfully it works, it's really almost instant with her, where I'll put a little bit of my hands, rub it together, and then um, because she's small, I put a tiny little bit of fractionated coconut in there, oil on my hands too, but you rub it together so well that it's not like you're really applying the oil. It's more like a fragrance cloud that kind of surrounds your hands. And then I just very gently just pet her down her spine all the way to the tip of her tail, lifting it up gently, kind of reminding her that happy tail is what we're after. And um, then I finally, after just petting her several times, very gently all the way down to the tip of her tail, or I should say up to the tip of her tail because we're lifting it up when we pet. Then I just really gently massage her ears with my hands with what's left of the vapor. And in short order, she is relaxed. This photograph actually was taken on the 4th of July, uh, not last year, but the year before. And both Solcito and Hazel are just thrilled that there's chaos outside, but they're a little uh, sanctuary inside. It has the lavender in the diffuser. Hazel has a little lavender on her back and you can see that Solcitos is close to her back as he can get because he was also benefiting from from the oils and how they helped to calm. All right, let's talk a little bit about diffusing essential oils. This is a picture of my buddy Mako and Mako suffered from cancer but he was kept very comfortable by his wonderful owner and um, her veterinarian, they worked together. And she found that the diffuser was his absolute favorite thing. You can see he's kind of sticking his tongue out and lapping the air because the frankincense that she had in the diffuser was so beneficial to him. He was just drawn to it that she actually had his own little diffuser on the ground near him so that he could be near it because he enjoyed it so much. Um, Diffusing essential oils is just a wonderful way to very gently uh, help support our pets. A couple rules that I really like to, um, to use uh, as far as diluting, I mean, sorry, as far as diffusing um, is just a few drops at a time in the, essential, in the water reservoir is really best so that you don't overwhelm. And you can use any of our essential oils um, around pets, maybe not as close as Mako is getting here, but you can use any of our essential oils around your pets as long as the door to the room is cracked so that they can leave if they wish, because they're going to know if something is not, not is too much for them or if they just don't care for it. And then they have the option because we don't ever really want to force them. Um, Mako really enjoyed this. This was a regular thing. So in this case, he was right next to it. But generally, you're going to have your diffuser up on the counter um, away from where they could knock it over. 
and you can go ahead and as long as you think it smells good and it isn't overpowering it's probably just fine for them but I use about three drops generally um, in a smaller room I do have a diffuser in my great room so that's a really big room and I go ahead and put as many drops in there as I want because there's so many different areas where the animals could go in the home if they felt like they'd want to get away from it but um, all of our oils are safe to use Generally, hot oils um, like oregano or something like um, melaleuca, which both dogs and cats are very sensitive to, and I generally try to avoid. It's not a one that I diffuse anyway. So, um, so I, you know, if you were to do it, it would be safe. It would be okay, but you wouldn't put very much in because you wouldn't want that for yourself either. So, um, anything that you're going to diffuse in your diffuser is safe. Again, just remember to leave your door um, cracked so that they can leave if they wish. Um, so whenever you're selecting an oil, it's important to keep these things in mind. Um, first of all, what do you have on hand, of course, and then double check every time with a list of safe oils that it is indeed a safe oil to use until you are absolutely certain of something that you use frequently. Whenever trying a new oil, double check just to be certain because you would really not want to accidentally put one um, that could harm them. And then also go easy with the oils. You know, you can always start with less and try more, um, using them infrequently and then increasing frequency. Just remember that you know you only need a little bit. These act on the molecular level, so a tiny little bit at first, and then watch for results. You can always add a little more and work together with someone who is experienced in oils how you can best um, alter what you're doing to make it maybe more effective. But start out with as with the smallest amount possible, and I like to choose the gentlest oils when possible. And we'll get to that chart very soon. Um, like I said, I have way too many notes here, and I've lost my lost my notes for um i've lost my place but that's okay because we're just going to follow these so i don't know which it's going to be exciting for me too which uh slide is next because i'm not going to bother reading them anymore um we'll just go over this so um here's my dilution chart um and it's a little it looks a little complicated but the way to read this is that um for cats or dogs you want to look at the size of the animal and then accordingly you would put one drop of essential oil with a great number of drops of the carrier oil for diluting so for example let's look at toy dog there in the middle toy dog is less than 10 pounds so that's a tiny tiny little dog for that size dog for topical use you would put one drop of a safe essential oil together with anywhere from 50 to 100 drops of your carrier oil. Again, fractionated coconut oil is the carrier oil of, of choice for many reasons. Um, so for most purposes, you're gonna use fractionated coconut oil. You can use others in a pinch, but they can be a little greasy and sometimes the smell can be an attractant. So you have to keep in mind that it might attract them to lick it off, which all the oils that we're gonna be using topically are safe if they are licked off, so you don't have to worry about that, but licking can sometimes cause its own problems. So just keep that in mind um, that the fractionated coconut oil is gonna be the least appealing to lick off. Another great option um, that is appealing to lick off, but it's also really moisturizing. So for dry skin situations, irritated skin situations, solid coconut oil is a wonderful carrier. And to make measuring easier, I'd love for you to know that uh, 100 drops is a teaspoon. So back to that toy dog example, one drop of essential oil in 50 to 100 drops carrier would be half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of carrier, whether you're using the liquid fractionated coconut oil or the solid coconut oil. And then you can see as you have um, a small dog, medium dog, large dog, giant dog, there are different dilution ratios because the larger dogs can um, handle much more strong potency of the oils, but um, you know they don't have to be. So like for example, say you have two dogs, a medium and a giant. In my case, because I have two different size dogs, I dilute for the smaller dog and 90% of the time it works just fine for the larger dog. So back to the last slide where I said go easy, 
that's an example of that. You know, I find that it works great if I use my spray that has been made for Hazel's feet on Silas's feet. If I find he's exercising a lot and I want to give him some extra support for his ligaments and muscles, then I go ahead and use that same spray and I found that it works great. So keep these in mind. It's not, you know, rocket science. You don't have to count out the drops. You can approximate with the teaspoon. Um, but just know that this is a general guideline and that diluting a little bit more never hurts, but you really don't want to dilute less than this if you can help it um, and only on a very short-term basis if you absolutely needed to. Um, there are times when you might want to, but you're probably going to be working with a vet if that's the case. All right. Here is a quick picture of my pet kit or part of it. Um, I really think it's important to keep your pet's oils away from your oils that you use for your body. And I have found a system that works for me is I generally use white caps for my pet products. And then I generally use black caps for um, this, my new system actually. Some of these that are in this picture are some of my older attempts, but I just very clearly label with either the pet's name or with dog, or I have the white caps. And the white caps tell me immediately that that's diluted quite a bit for use on my pets. And the cool thing is that if I need something, I can just go to my pet stash and grab it and put some of the diluted Roman chamomile on a cut or a scratch I might have, or Hazel's uh, cough blend that's right there. I can put a little bit on my throat if I feel that I have a tickle in my throat. So um, we can use them because they're perfectly diluted and ready to use for us, but they're safely diluted so that they're ready and um, safe, safely diluted for use for different pets. Here is a list of um, essential oils that are safe for dogs. Um, I do want to apologize that the newest oils are not on here, but they will be included in the bonus handouts that will be going to everyone who listens live or listens before Saturday and comments uh, with their name and where they're from in the comments. So um, this is going to include all of the, the oils up until about last year. And the new handout will include a few more that are safe for dogs and cats. But this is um, most gentle essential oils for dogs at the top and also recommended at the bottom. So I generally will go to the ones in green if I have them and use those, choose those over the ones that are in the yellow list. But the ones in the yellow list are perfectly safe to use. I just wanted people to know that they're not quite as gentle. So you wanna be a little bit more careful about strong uh, dilutions or lack of, or um, using those ones undiluted, um, just to let you know that they're just a little bit less gentle. That does not mean that they're not safe at all. So please don't misunderstand that. I just, my favorite ones are up there in that green list. Those are my go-tos that I use most often. Oils to avoid using with dogs, very important um, for different reasons you can see listed here. Any of these oils should be avoided with dogs for various reasons. So, um, gosh, I don't want to take too much time reading them, but you can go ahead and take a screenshot or better yet, sign up for our bonus handout and you'll get a list of these. Very important for dogs prone to seizures, basil, eucalyptus, fennel, rosemary, and our protective blend, which is On Guard. Those should definitely be avoided. So now we're gonna talk about cats. Cats are incredibly sensitive and lack enzymes to properly break down certain natural chemicals, including the following. So we've got a list here of some of the um, reasons why essential oils can be unsafe for cats. And uh, so it's very important to avoid those. And you will see that this is the list for cats of the most gentle essential oils. Again, the ones at the top are my go-tos. The ones at the bottom are completely fine, but just keep in mind when you're blending that those are a little bit less gentle, so you want to be careful not to go overboard on them. And that list is also in the bonus uh, that will be emailed out. And these are the oils to avoid using with cats. Um, 
for both dogs and cats, Melaleuca is very toxic. And although some, and some dogs don't have a hard time with it, some do. So I just generally tell people not to use it at all. It has been used in some pet preparations in the past, but in very, very, very small amounts. And there are so many different species of Melaleuca and there are so many different breeds of dogs. It's just better just to avoid altogether. Um, also, of course, with cats, all citrus oils. Very important because, again, their liver lacks an enzyme that would help the body to metabolize these so they can build up and cause real problems. So anything that has citrus in it, which is most of these, the reason why most of these blends are there. And then also avoid these unless advised by a vet. There are times when you can use these in small amounts, but you would not want to just go ahead and use those. The ones that are in the safe list or the also recommended lists are the ones that you would want to go ahead and use. These are good ones to avoid. Oops. Forget about that last slide. That was supposed to be deleted. <laughs> so anyway, I'd like for you to just take a moment to jot down three top health concerns. Um, we're, these uh, could be concerns for your pets. And then after my presentation, I'll be around to do a Q&A session. And I would love to help you then with individual questions and concerns that you might have. So go ahead and jot those down. And I wanna mention that, of course, nutrition is the foundation for, um, for our health and wellness. And for people, this is just an incredible product for so many different reasons. Our Lifelong Vitality Pack comes with three different supplements. But I also wanted to share that it is safe for animals, for dogs to use. Um, the adult formulation is perfectly safe for dogs 80 to 100 pounds. Um, and the dosage for that is one of each of those twice a day. Um, and they can be sprinkled into wet food or they can be put in a pill pocket or given in, uh, in a treat like that. So they really are fine as long as the dog is over 80 pounds. If they're over 100 pounds, then they can have two each of each of these three supplements twice a day. Um, so that is really something that kind of surprised me when I learned that big dogs could use those. But for my smaller dog, and um, I do also for my chow, he's also um, about 62 pounds, so he's too, too small for the adult formulation. So I use the children's formulation, where I give each of my dogs one of the children's chewable A to Z supplements, and they get one of those. Um, I just give them once a day. So I probably should research if I'm supposed to be doing it twice a day, but I give them once a day and they love that. And um, you can also use the um, liquid, uh, the fish oil. Oh my gosh, I cannot remember what it's called. I just drew blank, but we have a children's supplement that is a, a fish oil and it's got a mild orange flavor and it's perfectly safe to use with, um, with our pets that are smaller so that you don't have to worry about these um, adult formulation strength, which are only for dogs over 80 pounds. So again, under 80, go ahead and use the children's products. Uh, so we're just gonna briefly talk about how natural solutions for healthy empowered living. It's so important that um, you are aware that comparing the modern approach, which manages symptoms and it's made from synthetic agents that are uh, adapted in the lab for specific um, reactions that can also lead to side effects. Um, different people will have different side effects. The bodies, bodies metabolize them and utilize them differently. And we actually spend $6.5 trillion a year on global health care. And we really don't have the best results, in my opinion. Um, but the natural approach is one that I have uh, moved in favor of for my family, and I'm so glad that I did. Addresses the body's needs and root causes. And um, they're extracted completely from plants and natural um, organically made materials uh, that enhance physical and emotional health and are safe without side effects. Um, working on the root cause more than treating symptoms. And 
let's see. I can't remember, Rosie. I know you're there listening, but we talked about this. But I did mention that you should go ahead and write down your top three health concerns. Um, and right now, why don't you, oh, I remember. Why don't you go ahead and send a text message or a Facebook message to the person who told you about this class or the person who got you started with essential oils and go ahead and share with them. I would love to hear from you, I promise. Share with them your top three health concerns right now, either for yourself or for your animals. Um, or both. And um, it would be a great time to get started talking to them about how they can help with suggestions or resources for you to help you research what would be the best for you or for your animals to try to tackle those and try to try to work toward a wellness lifestyle and try to work toward ways you can support yourself and those health concerns. And one last reminder um, I think Rosie's going to take over after this. Uh, <laughs> again, I apologize, everyone, that my notes got confused. I had so many of them here. It just was better to wing it. Um, be sure to share in the comments where you're from so you get that bonus handout from me because it is going to be full of all kinds of information that is really nice to have at your fingertips. Um, I do want to share really quickly one uh, website that I use quite a bit, and she's also authored a book. Um, the website is called dogoiler.com, uh, www.dogoiler.com, and Sky Patterson is the woman who runs that, and she is really a great resource. I love that website. It has a list of different oils, what they can be used for, and she's written a book called Essential Oils for Dogs and Cats, and um, again, her name is Sky Patterson, P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N, and I highly recommend that you check that website out when you get a chance. I love to get my information there.